The last kings of Shanghai, the rival Jewish dynasties that helped create modern China, by Jonathan Kaufman is a captivating exploration of the intertwined histories of two prominent Jewish families, the Sassoons and the Kadoris, whose influence shaped the destiny of Shanghai and, by extension, modern China. In this literary analysis, we will delve into the book's central themes, characters, narrative structure, and historical significance. Kaufman's narrative is an illuminating journey through time, set against the backdrop of Shanghai's transformation from a quaint fishing village into a bustling metropolis. At its core, the book is a testament to the power of resilience, adaptation, and entrepreneurship in the face of adversity. The Sassoon and Kadori families, Jewish immigrants of Sephardic and Baghdadi origins respectively, arrived in Shanghai during the tumultuous 19th century. The author skillfully portrays their rise to prominence as they navigated the intricate web of Chinese politics, international diplomacy, and global commerce. One of the central themes in the book is the idea of identity and belonging. Kaufman expertly portrays how these two Jewish families, despite their foreign origins, became deeply integrated into the fabric of Shanghai society. They achieved this through their commitment to the city, philanthropic endeavors, and strategic marriages into local Chinese families. This complex interplay between cultural identity and assimilation is a recurring motif in the book. Kaufman also delves into the concept of family and legacy. Both the Sassoon and Kadori clans operated as tightly knit units, with patriarchs like David Sassoon and Eli Kadori at the helm. These family dynamics play a crucial role in the narrative, highlighting the sacrifices and challenges faced by individuals who were not only building business empires but also nurturing familial bonds. The book shows how the younger generations grappled with the weight of their forebears' legacies and the shifting landscapes of politics and commerce. The author's narrative style is immersive and evocative. Through vivid descriptions and meticulous research, Kaufman transports readers to the opulent ballrooms of the Cathay Hotel, the bustling streets of the Shanghai International Settlement, and the lavish gardens of the Kadori Estates. His meticulous attention to detail paints a rich and vibrant picture of the historical settings, making the reader feel like an eyewitness to the unfolding events. Kaufman's storytelling is not linear, he weaves back and forth in time to give depth to the characters and events. This non-linear narrative structure adds layers to the storytelling, gradually revealing the motivations and inner workings of the protagonists. It also mirrors the complexities of Shanghai's history, which is marked by sudden shifts and transformations. The book is not just a family saga but also a window into the broader historical context. Kaufman skillfully connects the personal stories of the Sassoons and Kadoris with the larger historical events of China and the world. From the Opium Wars to the Chinese Revolution and the Japanese Occupation, the family's fates are intertwined with the ebb and flow of China's tumultuous history. This contextualization gives readers a deeper understanding of how these families played a role in shaping not only Shanghai but also China's trajectory. The Last Kings of Shanghai is a compelling narrative that sheds light on a lesser-known chapter of history. It invites readers to ponder questions of identity, legacy, and the intricate dance between individuals and the historical currents that sweep them along. Jonathan Kaufman's meticulous research and storytelling prowess make this book a must-read for anyone interested in the intersection of family, culture, and history on the global stage. It is a testament to the enduring impact of individuals and families on the ever-evolving tapestry of human history, and a reminder that even in a foreign land, one can leave an indelible mark.